What's going on everybody, it's Game Unboxing Reviews here, and welcome back to another LEGO The Incredibles news update. So today we got a brand new trailer for LEGO The Incredibles, and in this video I'm going to be breaking it down and showing you guys some of the things that you might have missed. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so first off here of course you can see our very first in-game look at Mr. Incredibles Incredimobile. Now personally, I absolutely love this vehicle, so just seeing it in LEGO form is extremely cool. And hopefully we'll actually be able to drive this vehicle in the hub world, because that would be amazing. And it would also be cool if we got the civilian version of Bob's car as a drivable vehicle as well, because that also has a pretty cool design. Next up, this is of course the gameplay scene in the trailer, where we see Dash run up the side of a building. But if you pause the trailer at the right second, you'll actually see that Dash charges his run on the Lego pad and runs into a boost pad, which then allows him to traverse the building at a very fast speed. Now, three things that I've seen every Speedster fan want from Dash in this game is for him to be extremely fast, be able to run on water and up the sides of buildings. So to me, he looks pretty fast already, but I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun to play as in-game when you're running about the city. And we've already seen him run on water in the levels, so I'm sure you'll still be able to do that in the hub world as well. And as for running up the sides of buildings, I'm not 100% certain on this, but for those that are worried that Dash can only run up specific walls, I have a theory that might put your minds at ease. So my guess is that the player will probably be able to manually control Dash as he runs up walls, but I'm also thinking that these boost pads are just there to allow speedsters like Dash to reach the top of tall buildings much faster than usual. Either that or they are puzzle related like the ones Quicksilver had to deal with in Lego Marvel's Avengers. Next up here, of course, we can see our very first in-game look at Elastigirl's new suit and bike from The Incredibles 2. Looks pretty awesome to me. I mean, it's kind of like an updated and modernized version of the suit that Helen wore during the Glory Age of Supers. Now, this version of Elastigirl will obviously be playable, as Helen seems to be wearing this suit a lot in the new movie. But let's hope we can also drive around on her awesome new bike in the hub world as well. Now, this is a hilarious scene in the trailer where Frozone is complaining about this snow snowman costume not being his super suit. Now I'm not sure if this variant will be playable, but I'm definitely not against the idea. We can also see that Frozone's civilian clothes have now been changed, because in the Par Family gameplay trailer he was wearing a black jacket, but now he's actually wearing the turtleneck that we see him wearing in this scene in the movie. So it's a small fix, but I appreciate the fact that they corrected it. Moving on, we're now going to talk about the villains that we see in the trailer. So first off, here we have the incredible Incredibles 2 villain known as Screenslaver, and I've got to say that he looks extremely cool. I don't know what it is about the design, but this minifigure just looks so much better in game as opposed to the actual Lego sets. Now I'm pretty sure that what we're seeing here is a level during free play, because we do actually see Screenslaver's idle animation, which could suggest that this is the player playing as Screenslaver, and we can also see a mini kit to his left. It's either a level or an interior in the hub world, and it would be pretty awesome if we can actually wander around in Screenslaver's hideout. But of course, we will just have to wait and see. Here we get a really cool look at the Underminer, and he looks great in this trailer. I'm very excited to see what kind of powers and abilities he's going to have in game. Now we also get a great look at his henchmen and while I'm fairly certain that both of these shots were taken from the first of the sequel levels, it is still worth noting that it has been confirmed that the Underminer will be among the crime lords that you'll have to take down in the hub world. So you won't exactly be done with this villain even after you've completed the main story. Now here we finally have a great shot of Syndrome in his costume, and I've got to say that he looks fantastic in this game. I really appreciate it when a minifigure has a lot of detail on more than just the torso. I mean, there's even a little detail on the arms too, which is just really great to see. Now then, each district in the hub world is run by a crime lord, and there is a shot in the trailer where we see Violet and Dash fighting Syndrome's guards at night. So I'm thinking this area is either a level or Syndrome's district district in the hub world, which is kind of surprising to be honest because I was fairly certain that he'd be in control of Normanison Island, which is part of the hub world, so it'll be interesting to see who's taken control of that island as well. Lastly for the villains, we need to talk about Bomb Voyage because we actually see a lot of what this crime lord is up to in this trailer, and it gives us a great idea of how the crime waves will work in this game. But before that, I just want to quickly mention that when asked if there will still be crimes to stop once you've completed all the crime waves, 
airwaves. Jamie Eden said, yep, there's still other crimes going on. So I guess that confirms that random crimes are unlimited in this game, which is really great to hear. So in this first shot, we can see Frozone taking care of some mimes. And in the background, we can see some biohazard chemicals leaking into the streets, likely released by Bomb Voyage and his men, as we can see some graffiti over Bomb to the left of the vehicle. Now in this next shot, we can see police barricades and more propaganda from Bomb Voyage. We can also, of course, see Frozone riding a bomb, which actually reminded me of the Tic Tag Boom Battle Arena game mode from LEGO Dimensions, where you had to tag a bomb to your opponents before it explodes. However, this time around, I'm thinking that you have to get the bombs to safety and then jump off before it blows up. It could be as simple as just picking it up and throwing it in the water. Now, these last few shots are definitely connected, so allow me to explain. So in this first shot, we can see Frozone talking with a policeman, and I have to say that it's actually really cool to see police dogs as well. Now, we can also see more Bomb Voyage graffiti and police barricades, but what are they actually barricading? Well, as you can see here, Bomb Voyage has yet more propaganda on the sides of buildings, but this time around, it's not just any building because he's actually taking control over the DevTech building. Now, in case you don't know, DevTech is a company that plans to bring supers back into the spotlight and is run by CEO Winston Dever and his genius sister, Evelyn Dever, both of which are two brand new characters that you'll see in The Incredibles 2. So they're pretty much confirmed to be playable characters in this game. And finally, here of course we can see Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl taking on one of Bomb Voyage's mimes. And behind them, we can actually see the crime lord himself. So I'm assuming that these particular crime waves will end once the player has gone to the top of the dev tech building, defused the massive bomb and finally defeated Bomb Voyage. Now for this last part of the video, we're going to be breaking down every shot that we see of the hub world in this trailer. So first up, here is that same Bomb Voyage screenshot again, but if you look very carefully, you can actually see rain. And as far as I know, this is the first we've seen of weather being in this game. I mean, we've known for a long time that the hub world will feature a day and night cycle, but the addition of weather too is just a really cool surprise. This next shot is one of my favorites because the graphics just look really nice and colorful here. Very similar to how the first movie looked in the opening scene. So we can see Dash running past a construction worker and in the background we have a caution wet floor sign next to a clothes shop. There's also some billboards in this shot and I can't quite work out what the first one showcases but the second is of a classic Lego astronaut. This is a really great shot of the day and night cycle in action as we see the sun starting to set. We can also see what looks to be a hospital in front, a market center in the top corner, and a building with a sign that says City Electric. As well as that, there are of course pedestrians and vehicles going about their day, whilst Frozone ice slides through the city, which by the way, looks absolutely amazing. If we can do that all the time, and it's not like Iceman's gliding from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, then I'm going to be playing as Frozone a lot once this game is finally released. Next up, here we get a great shot of a crime scene. We can also see a jewelry store to the left and a billboard advertising scooters. Now at the crime scene, there are of course police barricades and vehicles, and there's also a burning building in the background. And according to Jamie Eden, who is the game director at TT Fusion, past the barricades is where the crime is. So maybe we'll actually get to fight some thugs inside the burning building or rescue some civilians. This is a great shot of the hub world at night. And there are a few things that I want to point out here. First off, there looks to be a bomb to the left. So this might be Bomb Voyage's district. We can also see a hotel sign that says open 24 hours, but of course some of the lights are broken. There's even a strange green lightning bolt coming from a house. I have absolutely no idea what that is, but I'm sure we'll find out once the game is finally released. And finally, for this shot of the trailer, am I crazy or is that snow? Because if not, then something is definitely falling from the sky. I'm assuming most of you didn't miss this shot because here of course we can see Carl and Ellie Fredrickson's house from Up. Now, yesterday I showed you guys an Up Easter egg in one of my other videos, which was pretty cool, but the fact that the house is also part of the hub world is just insane, and it makes me really want Carl and Russell to be playable characters more than ever. I mean, the great thing about this is that TT Fusion haven't just added the house to the hub world, because it's actually on a construction site, exactly like what we see in the Up movie. So you can tell that the devs are huge fans 
of Pixar's work. I also think it's worth mentioning that there is a ladder in the house, so we can probably go inside it, maybe to collect a mini kit or something, although I wouldn't expect the interior to be very detailed. And last but most certainly not least, here of course we can see Violet taking on the Underminer's henchman in what looks to be a brilliant recreation of Municiburg. Now, the reason I think that is because the area that Violet is in looks completely identical to the area that we see in the scene from the first movie when Mr. Incredible helps a woman get a cat down from a tree, but also of course manages to stop the bad guys by throwing the tree at their vehicle. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Now, I don't know about you, but this trailer got me extremely hyped for LEGO The Incredibles. I mean, everything we've seen this week has been fantastic, and all that was left that I needed to see was the hub world, day and night cycle, and crime waves, and that's exactly what we got in this trailer, which is amazing. So I'm literally just counting down the days now until this game is finally released. But of course, if I hear of anything more new and exciting about LEGO The Incredibles, then I'll be sure to let you all know. Anyway, guys, as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lots more videos real soon, and as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.